Hey, Randy Hunter here, and I've just been doing some practice on tritone subs on rhythm changes. And the reason I'm working so hard on tritone subs right now is because I'm creating a new lesson series on my subscription site, randyhunterjazz.vhx.tv, that um, really goes through the what's, when's, and why's of tritone subs. I may have gotten the words the order of the words wrong but anyway that's the gist of the of the series and eventually it'll be available on my other site where many folks purchase my lessons beginningsax.com but anyway tritone subs are a concept where you substitute one dominant chord for another dominant chord the, and the chords, the dominance in the tritone sub are a tritone apart. And a tritone is exactly half an octave. So it's, you know, it's kind of a mutual relationship there, the tritone sub. And there are certain scales that go specifically with many tritone subs, like altered dominant, Lydian dominant, even diminished scales can, uh, can serve in tritone subs. But what I'm working with right now is just pentatonic scales, and triads because that's basically or that's a good place to start with tritone subs pentatonic scales and triads so on this rhythm changes etude that i'm writing and, and really what i what i thought i would do is just kind of write some of these ideas down that i'm practicing on because i know a lot of times when i write things like etudes or even potential uh you know maybe this is kind of an idea for a solo. I don't go to gigs and play written out solos, but uh, but I love writing etudes. And um, I find it to be very helpful because what I can do is I can take whatever concept it is, vocabulary, concept, whatever, I can work it into etudes or in this case into just an eight bar passage. And I might find different ways to mold the ideas that I'm working with, you know, maybe different ways to assemble things because I know if all I do is practice straight up improvisation, I, um, I don't always find as many ways to put the vocabulary or the language together as if I take some time uh, occasionally and write some things out. You know, com composing and improvising have a very strong mutual relationship. You know, a composition is really improvised to begin with anyway in most cases. So, Anyway, with rhythm changes, I'm substituting most of the dominant chords I'm using tritone subs on, either in the form of pentatonics or triads, and, and I'll explain as we go along. On the other chords, I'm sticking with mainly very inside sort of sounds. So listen to this etude one more time, or listen, maybe I should say, to this eight-bar passage of rhythm changes. And I'll play it a little slower this time. <laughs> Now, let me kind of walk you through what I just played. On the C major chord, I'm just using notes from the C major pentatonic. And I really, I chose those particular notes with that particular feel because I kind of got a little bit of a Gene Ammons vibe going. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a big Gene Ammons among, among other great players, but I'm a Gene Ammons lover. And, you know, he, uh, I uh, was checking out recently, I worked through his confirmation bop. Um, or his confirmation solo when I was creating my confirmation bop lesson series and yeah, I just found he played with so much gutsiness in there so I'm thinking you know let's start this thing out with a little bit of that sort of vibe some gutsiness you may even hear the growl in there now at a faster tempo I might not use the growl but at a slower tempo kind of the style um, I really was digging with the growl. And then I go into this E flat pentatonic on this A7 chord. Now the E flat pentatonic is the pentatonic of the tritone. E flat is a tritone from A, so the E flat pentatonic works uh, as a tritone sub for the A chord. There are other alterations in there and you know if you want to subscribe to my site and check out this series as it develops, I really go through in depth some of these um, all these alterations and how these things work and where they're from. So anyway, right now I'm just going to say we're subbing the tritone pentatonic for that dominant chord, and uh, and I played and and I've got it written one two three five from the E flat pentatonic and it resolves down to the A. So listen to that first phrase again. 
Now, I'm thinking, how can I answer that and still stay within the tritone sub sort of um, avenue that I'm really exercising? So I figured, let's take another tri um, another ar another triplet um, right up that D minor arpeggio. Now, the tritone sub for G7 is D flat, D flat 7. So I'm just, I'm thinking, you know, why don't I use a D flat triad this time rather than a pentatonic because I want to use both pentatonics and triads. So I decided to have this D flat triad descending starting on the A flat. So there I've got this kind of point up, point down sort of phrase to start things with. On our on our first um, our first point up on the A7 chord we're going up point down on the G7. Get some real nice natural sort of call and response and I'm keeping my musical sentences concise, you know. It's almost like a musical period right there with a with an answer. And then we're going on into a little bit more of a development passage. Now, let's take a look at that one for a moment. I'm starting with the A as a pick up into that A7 chord. A into the flat 9 right up the arpeggio. So here on this A7 chord, we're not really doing a tritone substitution as much as we are doing a dominant 7 flat 9 arpeggio with the flat 9 on the bottom. So, And that really gives us a diminished arpeggio. <laughs> right up to that B flat that's on that D minor 7 chord. Now, here we have D minor 7 to G7. And you may not realize this, or you may not know this, but that's a 2-5, and a 2-5, the two chords have a cumulative function as 5. So that D minor 7 and G7 are really functioning together as a G7 chord. So we have options. We have the option of playing these chords individually. I mean, I could play D minor 7 to G7. You know, I could do a uh, tritone sub even. But I started thinking, you know, how about if I just combine them both and play the tritone sub over the D minor 7 to G7. So I'm using notes from the tritone, D flat, the pentatonic, if I, if I think of it that way, D flat pentatonic. If you've done um, if you've done my diminished scale lesson series, you're familiar with sounds like, um, and if you know the altered dominant scale, then uh, you realize maybe you might realize that this sound comes from any or all three of those options on this uh, on this chord. You know, so it's really, we could really simplify it and say a D-flat pentatonic with the addition of the B-natural, which is the 7 on D-flat. It's also the 3rd on the G7. So we've got a tritone sub, any way you look at it. It's um, really tones right out of D-flat, um, right out of D-flat dominant. Then we're up to the C chord, and I didn't want to go right into another tritone sub because tritone subs can be overused. But I did want to take it, bring it back home with almost a bluesy sort of sound, flat three to the three, root chromatically down to the seven. You know, we could say those are bop sounds, you know, lower neighbor to the three, chromatic passing tone. But to me, that's really a blues kind of sound. And then I'm going to answer that with on the F7 chord. So on the F7 chord, you'll see that we have notes from the F triad, the A, C, F, a chromatic passing tone down to the D sharp. And if you think about it, you'll realize that B7 is the tritone sub for, for F7. So there we have 3, 5, 8, 7 on B7. So when we put it together, we play the root triad and the tritone sub within the same bar. Pretty cool sound. And then, uh, and then I kind of take it out through this two five one, really almost with another bluesy kind of sound that anticipates that C chord. 
So there you have it. So listen to the whole thing one more time. <laughs> kind of like it fast but I also like it slow and it swings a little bit more and I might even play it with a different articulation when I do it slower you know so at the fast tempo I was using a lot of the dodden 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 kind of tongues dodden dodden dod um, at a slower tempo I might play it a little more swingy and with a little bit different articulation So there we've got a passage with tritone subs, some pretty sophisticated language that works either as a bop type phrase or a swing type phrase. Oh, so be sure to check out my website, beginningsax.com, where I've got lots of jazz improv and beginning sax lessons available. And also at randyhunterjazz.vhx.tv, that's my subscription site, you can sign up and follow this series as it develops and all of my other lesson series as I develop them and you have complete access to all of my lessons in streaming format for a very reasonable monthly rate. I hope to see you there.